Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this relatively big guy right here. This is the CRKT Herein. Um, first off, thank you very much. Uh, full disclosure, first off, thank you very much for CRKT uh, to to CRKT for sending this guy along. Um, they reached out to me and said, Nick, we got something a little new, a little different, a little crazy. We'd love you to take a look at it. I said, sure, why not? Um, and they sent this guy along. This is not what I was expecting, but then again, this I don't think was what anyone was expecting, so that's okay. Nonetheless, I told them, as always, I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. It might be a gem, it might be junk. They still did send it along, but we have to assume this is the very best quality controlled here and ever, and I'm doing my best not to let that affect the contents of the, uh, well, here inside this review. Huh? Okay, uh, next thing, let's do a size comparison real quick. This is not small. Uh, here it is against the Ontario Rat number two and the Spydeco Delica. So what we see here is, uh, yeah, this is a reasonably sized knife here. Here it is against the Spydeco PM2. And so, yep, reasonably sized right here. And then finally, um, here it is against a ruler. And what we see here is that the most likely blade measurement you're going to arrive at, although it's kind of weird to do that, is 3.5 inches there. So there is that. Next thing, this is a uh, this is a higher end piece than you're used to for CRKT. Just to prevent the the, the, the flood of people leaving the review halfway through because oh my god, you paid the, the, the. um uh, no, this is a two hundred and fifty dollar knife. This is though actually a little different for CRKT in that this is made in Italy. This is a collaboration uh, with I believe Lion Steel, a, a pretty well known high end Italian manufacturer. Uh, and so this is sort of at a, a very different level than a lot of what CRKT has done in the past. And then finally this. This is a design by Duhara, um, who is a pretty well-known knife designer who tends to do these very modern, futuristic sort of designs, and so it, it, that absolutely tracks. So anyways, let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, the ugly of this very weird knife. Um, on the good side, to start with, uh, one question that I got from a lot of people is, are both sides sharpened? Well, this side is. 100%, this side is a sharp uh, edge here. Um, but the other side is not. This is a, a solid, or I'm sorry, this is just a, a smooth edge. I'm sure that you probably could sharpen that up. Uh, the grind is, uh, it's thicker, but it's not so thicker that, you know, I'm sure if you, you really wanted to, you could turn this into a dagger, but that would be dumb because the way you close this knife is primarily going to be by touching the other side there. I think it wouldn't be unsafe to do that because the inside of the edge, excepting right in this area, the inside of the edge, but I, I don't, I'm not recommending that necessarily, uh, but, it, but it is not a dagger by, uh, to start with, although it certainly looks like one and you could certainly get some harassment for it. I don't think it'll fit that, uh, you know, your criterion, but then again, talk to your lawyer, not a YouTuber. So it is single sh uh, sided sharpening. Next thing, this guy has a clip that is weirdly workable. What I mean by that is how the heck do you put a clip on this knife? Well, apparently like this. Um, they've got this little two standoff sort of thing, and they've got a titanium clip here. It's actually got a fair amount of tension to it, um, but it definitely, it does work. Um, it, it is a reasonably nice little clip here, and because it's sitting on this little part in the center here, which is recessed, it's actually better ergonomically than you would think, because the ramp of the clip isn't actually digging up into your hand. In fact, the only ergonomic foul comes from having these standoffs in the back there, but th this was a well-designed clip, and it actually works pretty well to keep the knife in the pocket. So that's good. Next thing, blade on this guy. Although Although it's not marked on the knife, it is an M390 steel blade, um, which is nice, and it has relatively thin blade stock, which is also nice, um, and it has a surprisingly thin edge, which is also nice. Um, you know, given this isn't going to be the thing that you're going to be going out in the forest with to do wilderness batoning and whatnot with, um, but nonetheless, it is a, a knife that is actually capable of doing basic cutting tasks, uh, which doesn't sound like something I should be praising, but when you've got a design that could just very easily be done as, oh, this is an art knife, screw it, um, I, I do appreciate that they bothered with that and that they bothered putting it in a good steel that they did all of those things right uh, when they very much could have not then uh, next thing this is a knife that can be child proofed um, this doesn't come up very often but if you just put a padlock right through here um, you have a child proof knife this would not be able to deploy or anything so th th that's always a, a good thing um, and then finally on the good side I, the price tag on this is reasonable now hold on I, I have heard the, the comment section keyboard warriors are coming out Nick oh my god but uh, work with me here because I think CRKT hit a sweet spot with this pricing. They have done some pieces in the past. For instance, the Kamiya Shock. Oh, the Shock. 
Um, the shock is a $700 knife. That's a little bit outside of their range here. But at the same time, CRKT also has a history of undermaking knives. Uh, they will take great designs or interesting designs, and they will make them from materials that are just not quite where we want to see in a lot of modern sorts of knifery. And so I am very, very grateful that they actually ended up going where they did here. It's not cheap. Absolutely not. Um, and if you're looking at this as, you know, a, a good practical everyday carry piece, a, really? And B, uh, but I do think that they did what they what we've been asking for for a while, certainly what I've been asking for, and they made the knife right. They charged the price that they needed to to make a knife that doesn't feel like it's fundamentally flawed. Had they done this whole thing and then made the steel out of like 8CR13 MOV, uh, well, used 8CR13 MOV, uh, steel... That would have been disappointing because it's like, guys, I thought you were making something a little higher end. Or similarly, had they done the whole thing out of, you know, some kind of a, a, a pot mold, a pot metal sort of thing that with poor machining and whatnot, that would have made this design very disappointing. But instead, they did this at the price where they needed to, to, to get very nice machining. And honestly, the machining on it is quite nice. As an art piece, this is quite good. They've got the differential anodization here which is quite nice. They've done everything substantially right here. Um, there were a couple of little issues, but by and large, they've done what they needed to to do this properly, but they've gone to a price point that is not so, oh my God, high that everyone's going to look at it and go, come on, no. So it's not a cheap knife, but I think they did the right price here. They went, didn't go so high, like if they'd done the whole thing out of titanium and you know tried to make it an integral or something like that, then this would have ended up in the territory where no one could have done it. But they also didn't, you know, oh, well, let's get it in the shelves at Walmart and, and, you know, try and do it for 20 bucks. And that wouldn't be great either. So I feel like they did the right choice here. So to me, at least what's good here is that they hit a price that I think serves the piece very well. Um, it is a child proofable knife. Uh, it has a relative, a nice blade with a relatively thin edge. Um, it has a weirdly workable clip and it is single-sided sharpening to comply with a bunch of dagger laws around the country. Um, on the great side, honestly, this is art right? I mean, if you take a look at this, this is an artistic knife. More than anything else, this is meant to be pretty, and it is. At least in my estimation, I like the look of this very much, and I think it's very, very well done. Um, you know, the anodization is great. The differential kind of patterns of lines here is great. The different colors here is great. The hole in the blade is great. The whole damn thing, honestly, is a very pretty object. Whether it is a knife or not, I don't know is super necessary, but it is someplace between Egypt and Stargate, and it's beautifully done for what that needs to be. They have done the milling well enough that it shows off the art. They've done everything they needed to to let that design come through. And as a result, this is a piece that, although, you know, again, I don't know that this is going to be your choice, like, oh, I don't know, do I carry the home front today or the, the herein? Um... I think it's a piece that looks good enough that it could easily be on a bookshelf someplace. That it could easily be a part of your collection that you look down at and go like, damn, that's kind of cool looking. I like that. And so as a piece of sculpture, as a piece of modern industrial art, this is really well done. And I think it is a very attractive piece. And they did what they needed to do to make that right. And so to me, at least, that's what's great here is this is art and it's art done pretty well. On the bad side, this is not the most practical knife ever. There were a couple of reasons for that. Um, and mind you, it works. Uh, absolutely, I did carry it. I did use it as a knife, right? It, it opens things. It, it is a cutting tool. Um, but you get, for instance, a relatively, uh, I guess this is a saber grind. Uh, the rest of the blade is missing, but I think that's a saber grind, right? Um, but you get a relatively thin edge etc. But the thing is, in practice, it's relatively heavy. It's relatively large. Um, the amount of handle is relatively large compared to the amount of blade on this. Um, it's just, it's it's kind of an impractical piece. It's not meant to be, but uh, you do want to keep that one in mind. If you're just looking for, you know, the, the best EDC piece, not sure this is where I would send you. Next thing, um, the one thing design-wise that doesn't make all that much sense to me is the round hole with the pointed grind here, that just feels like they didn't point it out for some reason. They didn't make that fully pointy to match. I don't know. Uh, maybe that's a part of the design that I simply don't understand, but it just felt weird that they, that everything else here is pointy, but this is just round. Um, and so, I don't know. Um, there, there, there's that. Next thing, the lock bar access on this isn't great. 
So what I mean by that is that this is the lock by here because this is, by the way, just a pretty vanilla line of lock, right? Um, with a flipper on there and some bearings. I mean, watch my disassembly. You'll see exactly how it went. But in order to unlock the knife, you need to get in and push this to the side. Unfortunately, this is the only access we've been given. And that works. You can get in there. You can do it. And frankly, I'm willing to give it a lot of slack because if they did it much deeper, there would be an asymmetry there. And if they did that same asymmetry on, or if they did that same pull down over here, this would expose a part of the edge. So I think it might have been the best choice here, but I sure would have liked to have seen just a little bit more accessibility to the lock bar there. Um, this is a case where I think they favored art over... Um sort of functionality, and that, 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 that definitely shows up there. Ergonomically speaking, the clip is not amazing. Actually, the knife is surprisingly good in the hand, and in fact, if I hold it backwards, um, the knife is great in the hand. It's got pretty damn good ergonomics, which is weird, right? Because these act as thumb ramps. You're not going anywhere on this, the jimping, etc. Uh, when you put it in the back like this, at least for my hands, these two screws in the back here are sticking up and definitely hitting the hand, and so this is one of the things that makes it maybe not the most practical everyday carry knife ever. Um, and so in some ways, I think a a clip that sort of goes up and then back down again might have been a better choice than this guy, which, but again, they're going for a deeper carry here. Whatever, it's art, but still. Um, the clip is definitely a little bit ergonomic. Um, next thing, or a little bit unergonomic, that is, the uh, liners on this guy. Um, remember in my disassembly video, I talked about, wait a second, is this rust? That can't be rust, because I thought maybe they might have been titanium liners. Um, turns out that uh, CRKT confirmed to me they are, they are 420HC, uh, or I'm sorry, 420 steel. They didn't say HC, I'm kind of assuming, but who knows. Um, it's 420, uh, 420 steel. And so there was actually a little bit of rust on those liners. The, the, does it matter that they're using steel liners? No, not particularly, but the one way that it does matter is in the weight. This knife is heavier than you would expect. It looks like a relatively big, gappy piece of titanium, right? But in practice, um, this guy comes into six ounces uh, for three and a half inches of blade. That's a fair amount. And the balance says... Oh, that's another thing, is sometimes you try to flip it and you realize, oh crap, I'm going the wrong direction. And it doesn't deploy or anything, which would be dangerous. You can see there's a backspace here and everything. But still, um, the balance on this knife is pretty far back. The balance here is about here. It's not the end of the world. Um, and that's part of the reason you'd want that cut out there. But at the same time, um, if, again practicality is not the, the, the big thing here, but this is a big and heavy knife, and in some ways, I think it would have been a little bit more interesting had it been full tie, had it been not necessarily a frame lock, but a titanium liner or something like that, or just have the, uh, look, I'm not going to sit here and tell Duhara what to do with his artistic vision here, even though that's what I do every other damn day of my life, but still, um, it, it's definitely a heavy knife, um, 100%, and as a result, the balance isn't amazing. So to me, at least, that's what's bad here, is that it's very heavy, um, it's got the rest of the liners in there, which we're starting to rust a little bit. The clip is a little bit of an ergonomic issue. The lock bar access could be a bit better, but I kind of get it. The rounded hole point's a little weird, and it's certainly not the most practical thing ever. On the uh, ugly front, there is only one ugly issue here, and that is that this is a limited edition piece. CRKT, unfortunately, although I like the direction they're going in a lot of ways, actually. I think they've got a pretty good uh, shot at sort of redefining themselves as a brand that's relevant to collectors and no longer just kind of racing to the bottom on price, uh, which is a, a beautiful thing. But uh, unfortunately, they are still embracing the limited run thing. This is a limited edition knife. They are making 500 of them. Um, I, I believe very firmly, and I've talked about this. I have a whole video, let's limit the limited editions. I, I think limited runs are kind of dumb and we should just stop. Um, but you know what? Um, in this particular case, it doesn't bother me as much because it's not like this is a, a, a super functional tool that a bunch of people are going to be missing out on that will help them on their, in their daily lives on the job site. Um, I feel a little better about limited editions with art because it is just a luxury, right? Um, and at some level, I think that's what this is going on. So even though this is limited, I've decided to feature it here on the channel because I like seeing these higher end pieces from CRKT. I want to promote them doing that in the future. And like I said, this is not something that, you know, someone's going to miss out on a tool that would be great for them in their daily life just because they didn't get one of the initial ones. And frankly, it's still available at the time of writing. So um, it is a limited run. That's ugly. But that's why it's still showing up here on the channel, because I think it's kind of a little bit different given that it's already. Um, on the final conclusion front, at some level, there were probably some of you going like, Nick, oh my God, you're treating this so much different from other knives. And at some level, yeah, I am. This, maybe more so than anything else I've handled from CRKT, feels more like sculpture to me right? Um, this feels like something that is uh, a piece of modern art rather than necessarily being a pocket knife. 
And this is certainly art knife is a thing, right? But CRKT, I don't think, has really gotten into that in the past. I mean, they I think they've done some designs that were very artistic, but they've never really tried to make something that was a point of artistic pride. And I think this really gets there because it is a, a neat piece, right? It's got some good functional details. It's got a nice blade, a price point that isn't cheap but feels correct, and a, a design that is very nice, very artistic, and well implemented. Um, that, that's done well enough that it, it's like, yeah, you let that shine through. Yeah, it's not a super practical ED choice, the clip isn't super ergonomic, the line is a steel making the knife pretty heavy, and it is a limited run, which like I said is still a little more accessible or acceptable to me in an art piece, but still sucks. But the thing is, um, this is a knife that I'm, I'm sort of been struggling with a little bit in terms of my review, because as an EDC choice, no, absolutely not. You know, they, 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 sure, you could do it. Abs and there's probably somebody out there who's going to do it just to be contrarian or because they love the design so much that this this brings them joy. And you know what? Great. Rock on. I, I carried it. It worked fine. It does that. But I don't think there are going to be a bunch of people sitting there going, okay, hold on. Spydeco PM2, a cricket here in. PM2 here. No, it, 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 it's fundamentally a little bit different. No, this is not going to kick the M16 out of anybody's pocket, generally speaking. Um, so you're not going to buy this as an EDC choice. Instead, like I said, this is art. But I think it's art done well. Um, they've done good enough work here to complement the design, to leave the knife feeling like something a collector would want to collect. It, and not just somebody who collects, you know, cheap knives. Or somebody who, but this is something that I can see belonging in a serious collector's Okay, serious collector. Pretense alert. Oh, boy. But anyways, I'm, more importantly, I like that CRKT did it because this is what CRKT does best, right? Something weird. Um, but more importantly, it's something weird that they've done well. And they hit a price point that feels good. Um, it feels like they did this right. Um, they snuck it past the person in accounting who usually looks at cool designs by them and says, great design, now make it cost $4. And they're like, ah. Uh, Okay, uh, how many CRs is the minimum? And then and so on and so forth. I, I think this just hits a really great level. It's not completely out of line, but it's good enough to be pride-inducing. Um, it, it's good enough in terms of materials, in terms of all that, for a collector to go, yeah, I got one of those. That's awesome. So I really hope that CRKT continues to do this sort of thing. Not just art knives, of course. I, I, I want to see them keep doing functional pieces. I want to see them keeping making more titanium home fronts. That kind of thing. Just saying. Uh, but I think combining their stable of really interesting designers with the ability to make knives at scale and at prices that are workable for enthusiasts but also are able to get what they need to get done done, that's a beautiful thing. And so this kind of thing, creating artful knives accessible to people on a budget, uh, well, or at least on some budget, and are available to people, and that's where the limited edition part gets problematic, that would be a beautiful thing. So in terms of final conclusion, uh, you know whether you want this knife or not. There's nothing I could say at this point in the review that's going to make you go, oh, wait a second, that's perfect for me, because you're either looking at this and going, I love that design, or you're not. You're looking at this and going, wow, 250 bucks, that was a good price, or you're not. Or, or maybe you're looking for a practical function first EDC, or you're looking at this. You're going to be the one making the judge here, but if you're liking the design, you're liking the approach, and you see one of these guys around, then you absolutely won't be hearing a no from me. So anyways, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.